What's going on, everyone? I hope you had a fantastic weekend, and I hope you're ready to roll this week. The market was moving with some serious power on Thursday and Friday last week, and this week will be no different as we have major earnings about to release. We have another Powell speech. We have credit card delinquencies skyrocketing, and we're also going to be talking about some very interesting things that are secretly happening in the market right now. We have an amazing video today. We have a bunch of great setups for the week, and we have a lot to talk about, so you better stick with us all the way to the end. But Tom, let's get right into today's episode. Yeah, Mike, that market last week was awful. And look at how much the SPY drew to the downside. That was a major drop. And we're actually pushing that big support that we saw a couple weeks ago, right around $420. And we're back below a pretty key trend line. So if the SPY breaks this big support, we could see a bigger sell-off on our hands. At the same time, we're seeing QQQ bounce off of a major trend line here on the daily chart. There's been three or four perfect touches on this trend, and now it's starting to turn over pretty hard. All of this comes as Tesla reported negative earnings started breaking support. So Mike, we are in for a big week, and I think stocks like SQQQ, UVXY, and others should definitely be on watch here look at some of these calls here that that were bought in uh sept on september 25th 2023 look at how much uh, sqqq is up right now it's starting to get back above the price that they bought those at and who knows mike maybe the big money knows something but uh that market is starting to heat up a lot to the downsides creating a lot of great opportunities as well yeah, so over the past week or two, you know, bulls have been struggling, but the bears have been uh, starting to party a little bit, right? And uh, this is only normal. These types of uh, cycles happen in markets, and you guys should be excited for them. But for this week, I specifically want to start off with earnings because the list is giant. So, you know, looking at our chart for this week, we can see we have powerhouse companies like Microsoft. Alphabet, which is Google. We have Meta on Wednesday after close. We have Amazon. We have a bunch of other companies I didn't even talk about, but this week is fully loaded, so uh, it'll be a volatile one. It really will. And Mike, I think my favorite one of the week is actually going to be Boeing here. There's, I know there's a lot of big tech stocks, but Boeing has been tanking off to the downside. But man, there is a lot of big tech stocks. Microsoft and Google are also on watch as well. They are going to be huge there on Tuesday after close. Those are kind of the first huge ones coming out this week. Of course, Coke and Verizon report in pre-market Tuesday, but I don't think anybody really cares about those, Mike. Uh, really, <laughs> these big tech stocks are, I think, where the money's going to be at. Exactly. But I'll also highlight, you know, like, uh, let's say Raytheon on Tuesday before market open RTX, that'll be interesting with, you know, all of the war escalation around the world. And then even like General Motors on Tuesday before open and then Ford on Thursday after close. Those will be interesting with all the strikes that have happened lately. But I have to say out of all of these stocks, Meta will be the one I'm watching the most. Um, Meta is a stock that has had a tremendous recovery over the past year. And now it's to the point where it's just overbought and I'm looking at it to the downside. I bought the dip pretty heavily on Meta when, uh, you know, it got destroyed in 2022. And, you know, now I just think it's at a point where it's just a little bit overbought. And I think we're going to start to see some uh, downside pressure come into it. So it's definitely one that I think everyone should watch pretty closely this week. Yeah, it's going to be a huge stock. And Mike, Meta is getting pretty close to that $300 support again. And last week, we just dipped under that 310 to 312 support. So I'll definitely keep it on the radar. It was one of those big tech stocks that helped drive the overall market down last week. We just saw so many tech stocks selling off, and it created all that downwards pressure. But yeah, these earnings will be very important. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you guys want to keep it. But uh, like we said, Meta will be very important, along with Microsoft and Google. Google, those are probably the big three, I'd say. And don't forget about Amazon on Thursday either, though. Uh, you know, that, that's got to be in the conversation as well. No doubt. But, Tom, we also have the man, the myth, the legend, Jerome Powell speaking this week. What's he talking about? What do we have to know? And our protesters going to storm his speech again. <laughs> 
I sure hope that they don't. That was hilarious how those protesters came in. I was watching it on the live stream and I was just dumbfounded. But on Wednesday, October 25th, Powell will be speaking in after hours at 4.35 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, I will repeat that in after hours. It's pretty weird the, that he speaks at that time. He's going to be giving introductory remarks at the 2023 Moynihan Lecture in Social Science and Public Policy in Washington, D.C. So it's a uh, it's not going to be the most, uh, I would say, voluminous event. There's not going to be too much price action, I don't think, based off of this. But you never know if he says something about the economy, then uh, it could spark something. Exactly. So keep that in mind going forward. But what's also interesting, Tom, is yields have been skyrocketing lately. So tell us more about those. And uh, it's just something that uh, isn't necessarily good for the markets. Yeah, we've been talking about this a lot lately. And yields just keep making new legendary uh, highs, we should say, right? Now, it's not <laughs> like they're making all-time highs or anything like that. But considering how low yields have been lately, considering now, now that we're all the way up to 5% on the 10-year treasury yield first time since 2007 that is insane now if we actually go to a chart of us 10y to let us look at the treasury yields we go out to a daily look at how low these yields were in 2020 2021 i know people talk about this all the time because mortgage rates were really low during that time as well and now that these yields are rising up those mortgage rates are affecting a lot of of the housing market and just all the all different aspects of the economy but to see it rising this much this quickly is very very striking so i'm just sitting here wondering mike will five percent finally be the top will the federal reserve start finally easing sometime soon i sure hope so but they're not really set to until like may or june of next year you know it and another thing we have to talk about is this rapidly increasing rate of credit card delinquencies so basically looking at the chart right now we can see that credit card delinquencies are just skyrocketing and what's very scary is that on a year over year basis credit card delinquencies are up 50 percent that is a very very bad sign for the economy and then you know i guess while being fair and zooming out on this chart you know while credit card delinquencies have been rising a lot um over the past year in like a longer term viewpoint we can see that credit card delinquencies are still very low or you could say they're just like kind of like average right now um but what's scary is that they're rising super quickly and if they continue to rise this quickly it could definitely uh, bring some heat into the economy it can. And we talk about credit card delinquencies quite a bit because it really shows that pressure on consumers. You know, look at this rate down here that I'm circling in blue. It's just, it's such a quick upwards pace to that 50% mark. I mean, look at 2008, at least it was choppy heading up to there, right? But look at this. I mean, that is just like the biggest uptrend in credit card delinquencies that we've seen in a long, long time. So I think that's very striking to see. And it's just going to continue to, I think, put more pressure on the economy. I wonder how high this number is going to get by the end of the year with these yields continuing to rise. I mean, that pressure is just continuing to come, it looks like. Exactly. So Tom, let's jump over to the chart of the SPY really quickly. And on a daily chart, we can see that SPY has been, you know, definitely struggling over the past couple months. But now what I want you to do, Tom, is go to, let's say, a weekly chart and zoom out a little bit. What we'll see is that, you know, while in the short term, the downtrend looks pretty bad, you know, in the long term, what we're seeing right now isn't anything for the market it's barely a drop at all especially when you compare it to you know some of the drops that we've seen over the past couple of years this brings me into my next point looking at some other drawdowns that we've seen in the market basically looking at this chart right now we can see that in the second year of bull markets the average drawdown is around 10 percent you know for the s p 500 right now we're only around like that seven to eight percent mark but there have been multiple times in history where the drawdown was 12 percent 13 percent 14 percent or even 16 percent so while the sell-off that we've seen so far has been you know decently bad you know looking at historical data the market can definitely fall a lot more so that's just another thing to keep in mind uh going forward yeah, I agree, Mike. And whenever I see those drawdown numbers, it definitely worries me. And the market is starting to heat up pretty bad. And we're nearing that big support around 420. Like I said, if that breaks, I mean, we could go up quite a bit lower here. I think the next 
Your support I see coming up would be right around 417, then 415. Uh, but I could honestly see a drop possibly back down to this major support, maybe around like $400. I think 400 to 410 would be a major level for us to get to this year and for us to see. Um, and I think that on a drawdown like this, I mean, if we keep up this pace and we have three more red candles like this, we'll be there in no time, right? Like that sell-off last week was nuts. And we have all the bad news going on in Israel at the same exact time as our yields are flying up and just all this pressure's on the economy. So I think we're going to see some pretty bloody stuff in the short term, but it's going to make for great opportunities. You know, we keep talking about SQQQ uh, and even these metals like SLV and GLD that have been doing fantastic. Like gold has been really heating up. It's been amazing to watch. No doubt. Well, Tom, let's get right into some setups and predictions for tomorrow. One stock I'm watching very closely is Tesla. So this one got punched right in the face last week because of their earnings report. And uh, yeah, it's been selling off in a pretty big way. I am continuing to look at this one in a bearish way. And I think there's a pretty good shot that it retests that $200 support somewhat soon. Right now, it's right around $212 a share. And, you know, as long as the uh, market keeps falling like it, like it has been, I think Tesla can also fall more. But I'll also say this, you know, while I'm bearish on Tesla right now, you know, if the market has a very green day, then it won't be worth playing Tesla to the downside. Like you really want to trade this one down when the market itself is also bleeding. Exactly. And you know, there's always going to be those green days that are mixed in every once in a while on these downtrends and they're going to be pretty big green days. Like let's actually go back to last Tuesday and last Monday, right? Like the spy's been in a pretty bad downtrend, but look at those couple of great green days. Then we had some major red days kind of following that last week. So, you know, there's always going to be a couple green days mixed in there. I like that you said that, Mike. With my first play, I'm going with Amazon down and that kind of applies to my play as well. Uh, if Amazon keeps going down and they start breaking this support around 124.80, will be watching it to possibly get back down to 123.20. That major support down there where we saw a couple wicks, uh, this will be a pretty big move. Amazon is falling off just like the spy. You go out to that daily chart and Oh, it's getting bloody in the short term. There's just three or four just huge red candles last week pushing us right down to that support. No doubt. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely is SQQQ. So this goes up when tech stocks and the NASDAQ are coming down. And it is uh, a very crazy stock to trade in the short term because it's leveraged. So uh, while it has awesome moves, you do not want to hold this one over long periods of time. But, you know, as long as the market's red and big tech stocks are falling, this is a uh, great upside play for the short term. It really is. I mean, look at those moves last week. Like, let's just look at some of the percentages, the upside here, like from the low of Thursday, like if you just would have bought it, let's just say right at market open uh, up to the high of day that day, you know, close somewhere up around like four to 4.2%. That's pretty damn good for a nice uptrend. And then on Friday, we were looking at something like 4% there. So uh, pretty, pretty good moves there by SQQQ. I love it, Mike. It's one of my favorite ETFs to trade. If you guys are in the premium discord, you know, I love SQQQ. But uh, with my next play, I'm going with AT&T for a nice earnings continuation. Now, they actually had a pretty good move back, and they're getting some nice volatility. What I like about them is they're actually not correlated to the SPY. Look, it has a strong negative correlation to the SPY. It's actually not very often that we see this on stocks in the market. So I'll be watching this one very, very closely. It's coming up off of earnings. It's starting to gap up off of lows, and these... I guess you could say telecommunication stocks have been pretty rough lately. So I'll be watching for maybe a continuation, but I will say it's going to be risky. You, you have to really be able to identify the momentum with this one. All right. Sounds good. Well, let's get right into the momentum plays. And with the first one, we have UVXY to the upside. Yeah. If UVXY breaks out above 1980 tomorrow, go ahead and look at some calls. This could be amazing if that volatility continues to pick up. Sounds good. With the next one, we have AMD to the downside. Yeah, how could we not trade this one down? It's been terrible lately, kind of bouncing off a trend line as it falls as well. If they break under $101, go ahead and look at puts. It's just under that low of day from Friday. Uh, and then watch it down to $100. That'll be a major support coming up. 
Perfect. And then with the last one, we have Coinbase for both directions. C-O-I-N. You know, Bitcoin's been pretty volatile lately. If Coinbase gets under $73, which was like the low of last week, then go ahead and look at it to the downside. But at the same time, if they start breaking intraday resistance right around $76 even, then look at it up. I think breaking 76 will give us a, a nice a nice entry to the upside tomorrow. All right. So we have that upside level for coin. We have the downside level as well. Uh, this is only a play if it breaks either of those levels. Uh, if it breaks below the downside level, playing it down. Breaks above the upside level, playing it up. And then for AMD, don't forget about that downside level as well. And then UVXY, don't forget about the upside level there. But it is now about that time for today's big money 1.8 million dollar trade of the day and today we are looking at ticker symbol slv so slv is uh it, it follows silver and uh, silver tends to move just you know with gold and we've talking we've been talking about gold to the upside in a very bullish way over the past couple of weeks and it has done nothing but basically go straight up so it has been a tremendous play lately and you know seeing more big money flow into uh you know, these types of plays is great to see. And more specifically, the big money dumped $1.8 million into the SLV 20 strike call options that expire on March 28th of 2024. So this play has some time to it. Uh, it's a lot of money and these call options are in the money as well. Overall, I think it's a pretty good trade and uh, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan too. SLV has a long way to go, in my opinion. You know, whenever you zoom out on a daily chart, it starts to look a lot more enticing, you know, because whenever you zoom out, you can see how high silver was getting during uh, the aftermath of the financial collapse. You know, it ran all the way up to $48, $42. I mean, that was insane to see it up that high. It's sitting around mid-20s right now, starting to get that uptrend kind of coming back. So uh, I like it right here. I think the big money is, uh, is good for getting this, Mike, and I like how far they have out on this out to march is perfect the 20 dollars strike i think is a great strike right now as well considering where silver's at that'll even be a pretty big support if it starts to pull back so i do like the strike and uh, like you said we've been talking about gold and silver a lot the past few weeks and it's been awesome to see it run up like if we go to a five minute chart uh, silver and gold almost look like penny stocks the way they've been running <laughs> yeah, so keep a close eye on uh, SLV and GLD going forward. They've both been seeing some tremendous inflows, and uh, they have real reasons to. Because when people are scared, they resort to precious metals that, have, that humans have resorted to for thousands and thousands of years. So keep a close eye on them going forward. But if you guys are looking at the market right now and you want to take advantage of the recent volatility, but you just don't have the... Uh, the tools to do so, definitely check out the first link in the description in the comments down below. Uh, it is our premium portion of the Stocked Up Discord. Uh, if you decide to join up, you'll get access to our day trading bots like Hybrid Bot and Sniper Bot, also SM Bot. Uh, our bots have been absolutely on fire lately. Of course, not every single play wins because that's just impossible. And anyone, anyone who tells you that you could win every single trade is straight up lying to you. But overall, our bots have been doing amazing. A couple example plays were Tesla last week. Uh, we can see the bot alerted the Tesla 250 strike put options at $735 each. And they ran all the way up to $1,228 each all within the same day. This is just one example trade. You also get access to multi-million dollar big money trades every single day before the market closes and many other features. You can chat with Tom and myself all day long. Long story short, it's the best program out there, uh, especially for short-term trading and you can cancel at any time. So it's going to be that first link in the description in the comments down below. But Tom, we're set for a very exciting week. Lots of earnings. We have Powell. We have uh, yields going crazy. Do you have any final thoughts or anything else you're looking at for the week? Yeah, it's going to be a big week for the earnings. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to hit on. There is some numbers coming out on Thursday. The GDP growth rate uh, on Thursday, October 26th, one hour before the market opens. Then Friday, we'll actually see uh, PCE data coming out. So be 
ready for that there's going to be some pretty big data end of week which we'll talk about a lot more as we get there but for right now mike those earnings and powell will be the big things on watch so uh keep your eyes on microsoft and google on tuesday and then meta on wednesday along with amazon thursday those are the big players out there and of course there's a lot more mixed in like we talked about earlier but it's going to be a big week mike it's going to be fun that market's falling off and these opportunities have been so awesome to trade lately Exactly. And, uh, you know, if you've been crushing it lately, keep that momentum rolling. But even if you haven't, you know, that's all right. A lot of times in markets where volatility is increasing like it is now, that presents some of the best opportunities for short-term traders. The down days are much more violent, which is a good thing. The upside and the up days are as well. So, you know, that's a great thing for short-term traders. Keep your head up high. Always keep those stop losses in place. And let's have an amazing week, guys. If you're new to the channel and you like our videos, make sure to subscribe so you could hear from us more often. And last but not least, I want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Ryan Duffy 0907 in the Stocked Up Discord. You're very new to the chat, but you've been an amazing member so far. So make sure to keep it up. Last but not least, don't forget to check out that first link in the description in the comments down below to trade with Tom and myself every single day. And besides that, let's have an amazing week in the markets.